Chapter One: The River Bank. It is spring, and the mole is cleaning his little home. He is working very hard, and he is very tired. Suddenly, he decides to stop. He wants to go outside. He goes up a small tunnel, and arrives outside in a meadow. This is nice, he thinks when he arrives in the sunlight. This is better than cleaning. <laughs> he is very happy. He crosses meadows and woods. He sees rabbits, birds, and a lot of other animals. They are all working hard. Finally, he arrives at the river. He sits down on the grass. The water rat comes out of his hole in the river bank. He sees Mole. Hello, Mole. He says, "Would you like to come over?" Oh, hello, Rat. Yes, I would.、Uh, but how? Replies Mole. I can come and get you in my boat. Rat gets into a little boat and crosses the river. Mole gets into the boat. This is wonderful, <laughs> says Mole. This is my first time in a boat. Your first time, says Rat. There's nothing better than boats. Let's go for a picnic. Oh yes, please, says Mole. Rat goes into his house and returns with a big basket full of food. They go down the river in the boat. Rat tells Mole about life on the river and about his neighbors. The otters, kingfishers, and moorhens. Mole sees a wood in the distance. What's over there? He asks. That's the wild wood, says Rat. We don't go there often. Are they nice people there? Asks Mole. Well, replies Rat. The squirrels and rabbits are all right, and there's Badger. He's nice. But the weasels, stoats, and foxes—you、oh, must be careful with them. They stop for their picnic, and Mole unpacks the basket. Soon the otter arrives. Hello, otter, says Rat. This is my friend, Mr. Mole. Pleased to meet you, says Otter to Mole. Suddenly the badger appears, and Rat invites him to the picnic. But Badger turns around and goes away. Badger hates company, says Rat. We don't see him often. But look, there's Toad on the river in his new boat. It's Toad's new hobby, says Otter. Yes, says Rat. First it was sailing, then it was houseboating. He changes hobby all the time. Rat waves to Toad, but Toad doesn't stop. Rat and Mole return to Rat's house in the boat. Rat invites Mole to stay with him, and Mole is very happy. Chapter Two: The Open Road. One summer morning. Mole and Rat decide to visit Mr. Toad. They get in the boat and go up the river. Toad's rich, you know, says Rat. Is Toad very nice? asks Mole. Oh yes, replies Rat. He's very nice. He isn't very intelligent, but we can't all be clever. And sometimes he's boastful and arrogant, but he's got some good qualities. Soon they arrive at Toad Hall. They pass by a boating house. It is full of boats. They are all out of the water. It seems that Toad isn't interested in boating any more. I wonder what his new hobby is," says Rat. Rat and Mole get out of the boat and walk across the gardens of Toad Hall. They see Toad in the garden. He is looking at a big map. He is very pleased to see Rat and Mole. Hello, Toad says Rat. This is my friend Mole. Oh, 
splendid, cries Toad. Pleased to meet you. Come and see my new hobby. He shows them a gypsy caravan. It is yellow and green with red wheels. There's real life, cries Toad. The open road, travel, change, interest, excitement. <laughs> Look inside; everything's there. We've got everything for our journey this afternoon. Excuse me, you say we, our, this afternoon? Asks Rat. Yes, Ratty. I can't go without you. Says Toad. Oh, Rat! It's so exciting. Says Mole. Very well," says Rat. "Let's go." After lunch, they go to the paddock and catch the old grey horse. Then they set off on the road. It is a lovely afternoon, and the birds whistle at them. And passers-by say, "Good afternoon." Good afternoon. <laughs> In the evening, they stop and eat a simple meal. Then they go to bed. The next morning. Toad sleeps until very late, so Mole walks to the nearest village. He buys milk and eggs for breakfast, and Rat lights a fire and washes the dinner plates from the night before. They are very tired after this hard work. Finally, Toad gets up. <sighs> Life on the road is very easy, he says. After breakfast, they set off. They are walking along the road, when suddenly a magnificent motor car drives past. The horse is frightened and pulls the caravan off the road into a ditch. The caravan is ruined. Rat is furious. You villains! Police! Help! He shouts. But Toad is sitting in the middle of the road. He is staring in the direction of the motor car. Poop, poop! He says. Poop, poop! Rat and Mole try to pull the caravan out of the ditch, but they can't. Rat asks, "Can you help us, Toad?" Poop, poop! Replies Toad. Now that's the real way to travel. The only way. The caravan is ruined, and they must return home by train. The next day, Toad buys a big and very expensive motor car. Chapter Three: The Wild Wood. Mole wants to meet Badger. Could you ask him here for dinner? He asks Rat. He wouldn't come. Replies Rat. He hates company. Well, can we go and call on him? Suggests Mole. Oh no! Says Rat. He's very shy, and also he lives in the middle of the wild wood. It is clear that Rat doesn't want to visit Badger. It is winter time, and Rat sleeps a lot. One afternoon, he is sleeping in his armchair in front of the fire. So Mole decides to go and explore the wild wood and meet Badger. He goes outside. It is very cold, and the sky is grey. He is happy, and when he arrives at the wild wood, he is not frightened. Then. He starts to see faces, hundreds of faces, little faces with hard eyes. Mole is frightened and leaves the path. In a panic, Mole starts to run. He doesn't know where. Finally, he hides inside the hollow of an old tree. Rat wakes up and looks for Mole, but Mole is not there. Mole's hat and boots are gone. Rat goes outside and sees footprints. They are going in the direction of the wild wood. 
Rat is worried. He goes back into the house, takes two pistols and a big stick, and sets off for the wild wood. He also sees little faces with hard eyes, but they disappear immediately when they see his pistols and stick. Rat hunts for an hour. Molly, Molly, where are you? It's me, Rat. Finally, he hears a cry. Ratty, is that really you? I'm so frightened. Rat sees Mole under the tree. Mole, you mustn't come into the wild wood alone. We animals from the river bank always come in couples. But brave Mister Toad isn't frightened of the wood, says Mole. Rat laughs. <laughs> Toad, <laughs> he wouldn't come here for a hatful of gold. But now we must leave for home before night comes. Rat looks around. It's snowing, and everything looks so different in the snow. They set off bravely, but after two hours they stop for a rest. The snow is very deep, and they are very tired and wet. We're very tired, says Rat. Let's find a dry cave or hole. Then we can rest before trying again. They look for shelter. Suddenly, Mole falls down. Oh, oh, my leg! He cries. Poor Mole, says Rat. He looks at the cut on Mole's leg. This is a cut from metal, not a branch, he says. He starts to dig in the snow. Hooray! Hooray! He shouts. What is it? asks Mole. They see a little green door. A bell is hanging next to it. Under the bell is written, "Mr. Badger." Rat hits the door with his stick, and Mole rings the bell. Chapter Four, Mister Badger. Mole and Rat wait for a long time, and finally they hear footsteps. The door opens a little, and they see a nose and two sleepy eyes. Who is it? asks Badger. He is angry. Oh, Badger! cries Rat. It's me, Rat, and my friend Mole. We're lost in the snow. My dear Ratty says Badger. Come in, lost in the snow, in the wild wood. This isn't the kind of night for small animals to be out. He takes them to the kitchen. There is a fire burning in the fireplace. Badger gives them dressing gowns and slippers. They sit in front of the fire while Badger prepares dinner for them. They are very hungry, and they eat and eat. How's old Toad? asks Badger. From bad to worse, says Rat. Another accident in his car. This is the seventh. He's always in hospital or paying fines. He needs to pay for a driver, but he's convinced that he's a good driver. Badger thinks. I can't do anything now, but when the nights are short, we must talk to Toad. He must become sensible. Now it's time for bed. He takes them to a room. It is full of food for the winter. Apples, turnips, potatoes, nuts, and honey. But there are also two little beds. Mole and Rat get undressed and go to sleep. The next morning they get up very late. They are eating breakfast in the kitchen when the front doorbell rings. It's Otter. He is very happy to see Rat and Mole. Everybody on the river is very worried about you," he says. 
At that moment, Badger arrives. I think it's time for lunch, he says. During lunch, Otter and Rad talk about the river. Mole tells Badger, I like your house. It's good to live underground. Badger is pleased that Mole likes his house. Yes, here it's safe, peaceful and quiet. After lunch, Badger shows Mole his home. There are a lot of rooms and tunnels. They return to the kitchen. Ratty is wearing his coat. Come on, Mole. It's time to go, he says. We must go before night. He is worried. Huh, it's all right, says Otter. I'm coming with you. Don't worry, Ratty, says Badger. My tunnels go to the edge of the wood. He picks up a lantern and takes them down a long tunnel. After a long time, they see daylight. They are on the edge of the wild wood. Badger says goodbye and goes away quickly. Otter takes them to the river. Mole is very happy to be home. Chapter 5 Mr. Toad It is a sunny morning in summer. Mole and Rat are having breakfast. Suddenly, there is a knock at the door. Mole goes to the door and comes back with Badger. Badger looks very serious. It's time, he says. Time for what? asks Rat. He looks at the clock. Time for who? says Badger. Time for Toad. We must talk to him. I know that another big new motor car is arriving at Toad Hall today. We must go and talk to Toad before it's too late. Good, says Rat. We must save poor Toad. When they arrive at Toad Hall, a big red car is in front of the house. Toad is coming out of the house. He is wearing goggles, a cap, an enormous coat, and gloves. Hello, he says when he sees them. Take him inside, says Badger to Rat and Mole. They take him inside. Now, Toad, says Badger, take these stupid clothes off. No, says Toad. Why are you doing this? Take his clothes off, Badger orders. Rat sits on Toad, and Mole takes off Toad's motor clothes. Now, Toad, says Badger, you don't listen to our advice. You're spending all your money, and people are talking about the animals because of your fast driving and problems with the police. But Toad is not sorry. So they lock him in a bedroom. You can come out when you're sorry, says Rat. They go downstairs. Toad shouts at them through the keyhole. Toad's very determined, says Badger. It's a difficult situation. We must never leave Toad alone. The days pass, but Toad is still interested in cars. He becomes depressed. One morning, Rat is with Toad. How are you today, Toad? He asks. Not very well, replies Toad. Could you go to the village and call the doctor? Rat is worried. A doctor? He must be very ill. He goes out of the room and locks the door. Then he runs to the village. Toad jumps out of bed and laughs. He gets dressed quickly. He puts some money in his pockets. He climbs out of the window and jumps to the ground. He then walks away in the opposite direction to Rat. The sun is shining, and he is very happy with himself. 
Poor Ratty, he thinks. He's a very good animal, but not very intelligent. I must educate him one day. He arrives in a small town and sees a sign. The Red Lion. Toad is very hungry. He goes into the inn and orders a big lunch. Suddenly he hears, Poop! Poop! and sees a car outside the inn. The people get out and go into the inn. Toad walks outside. He looks at the car. I wonder, he thinks, if this type of car starts easily. In a dream, he starts the car. Then sits in the driver's seat and drives away. He doesn't think about right or wrong. He drives faster and faster. We must punish this villain severely, says the magistrate. He is guilty, first of all, of stealing a motor car, secondly, of driving dangerously, and thirdly, of being rude to the police. I give you twenty years in prison. Poor Toad is locked up in prison. Chapter 6 Toad's Adventures Toad is very unhappy. Ah, this is the end of everything, he thinks. <sighs> the end of the career of Toad. The popular and handsome Toad. The rich and kind Toad. He starts crying. <laughs> now I must stay in this dark prison. Oh, clever rat and sensible mole. Oh, intelligent badger. <laughs> Poor Toad. The days and weeks pass and he refuses to eat. The jailer has got a daughter, and she helps her father in the prison. She is very fond of animals, and is sorry for Toad. One day she asks, Father, please let me look after Toad. He's so unhappy and so thin. She knocks on the door of Toad's cell. Now. Toad, she says, sit up and stop crying. Be sensible and eat some dinner. The dinner smells very good, and Toad starts to think that life is not so bad. He sits up and starts to eat. The jailer's daughter asks him about Toad Hall. He talks about his home. Then she asks him about his animal friends. When the girl leaves, Toad is himself again, the same arrogant animal. The days pass, and they have a lot of interesting talks together. The jailer's daughter is very sorry for Toad, and thinks it is wrong that Toad is in prison. Vain Toad believes that she is in love with him, and is a little sorry that the social gap between them is so big. One morning, she says, Listen, Toad, I've got an aunt. She's a washerwoman and does the washing for all the prisoners here. Now, you're very rich and she's very poor. I think that if you pay her, she can give you her dress and bonnet and you can escape. You are very similar. We are not, says Toad. I'm very elegant, considering I'm a toad. My aunt's also elegant, considering she's a washerwoman, says the girl. I'm trying to help you, and you are proud and ungrateful. 
Please introduce me to your aunt, says Toad. The next evening, the girl's aunt comes into the cell. She is carrying Toad's washing. On the table is a pile of gold coins. The washerwoman gives Toad a cotton dress, an apron, and a bonnet. Then Toad takes off his coat and waistcoat and puts on the dress, apron, and bonnet. Goodbye, Toad, says the girl. Toad is nervous, but he goes out. No one stops him. When he is outside, he walks towards the town. Soon he sees some red and green lights and the noise of a train. Aha! He thinks a railway station. I can catch a train home. He goes to the ticket office and asks for a ticket to the village near Toad Hall, but he has no money. It is all in his waistcoat pocket in the prison. He cannot get home. Toad is very sad. He walks down the platform. He starts to cry. <laughs> Hello, what's the matter? asks the train driver. Sir, cries Toad, I'm a poor washerwoman. I have no money. I can't pay for a ticket, and I must get home tonight. <laughs> Very well, says the kind train driver. You're the washerwoman. I can give you a ride if you wash some shirts for me. Toad climbs up. The guard waves his flag, and the train moves out of the station. Now Toad is very happy. He thinks about Toad Hall, his friends, and good things to eat. After some time, the train driver says, "It's very strange. We're the last train tonight, but I'm sure there's another train behind us." Toad immediately becomes serious and depressed. And the train is full of policemen with truncheons. They're shouting, "Stop! Stop! Stop!" Continues the train driver. Toad falls to his knees. Save me, Mister Train Driver! I'm not a washerwoman. I'm Toad, the, the well-known and popular Mister Toad. They want me. I'm a car thief, and I'm running away from prison. The train driver looks very serious. I must stop and give you to the police, but you're obviously very sorry. Soon there's a tunnel. At the other end, there's a wood. You must jump out and hide in the wood. After the tunnel, Toad jumps. He runs into the wood and hides. The police train comes out of the tunnel and continues following the other train. Toad laughs, but soon he stops laughing. It is very late and dark and cold. He is in a strange wood with no money and far away from friends and home. Cold, hungry, and tired, he makes a bed with dead leaves and branches under a tree, and goes to sleep. Finally, he arrives at the river. He sits down on the grass.
The water rat comes out of his hole in the river bank. He sees Mole. Hello, Mole. He says, "Would you like to come over?" Oh, hello, Rat. Yes, I would.、Uh, but how? Replies Mole. I can come and get you in my boat. Rat gets into a little boat and crosses the river. Mole gets into the boat. This is wonderful," says Mole. This is my first time in a boat. Your first time," says Rat. "There's nothing better than boats. Let's go for a picnic." "Oh yes, please," says Mole. Rat goes into his house and returns with a big basket full of food. They go down the river in the boat. Rat tells Mole about life on the river and about his neighbors, the otters, kingfishers, and moorhens. Mole sees a wood in the distance. What's over there? He asks. That's the wild wood, says Rat. We don't go there often. Are they nice people there? Asks Mole. Well, replies Rat. The squirrels and rabbits are all right, and there's Badger. He's nice, but the weasels, stoats, and foxes—you、oh, must be careful with them. They stop for their picnic, and Mole unpacks the basket. Soon the otter arrives. Hello, otter," says Rat. "This is my friend, Mr. Mole." "Pleased to meet you," says Otter to Mole. Suddenly the badger appears. And Rat invites him to the picnic, but Badger turns around and goes away.